I have broken my flash. Let's talk about how we're going to get around this issue. Welcome to the mesmerizing world of macro photography. My name is Stuart Wood, a professional macro photographer from the UK. I capture the enchanting details of nature, revealing the breathtaking elegance hidden within a drop of dew or the delicate wings of a dragonfly. Join me on my YouTube channel as I make weekly videos giving you photography tips and behind the scenes videos as I explore the unseen world for the art of macro photography. So last year, the dog knocked my setup off the desk and it broke the flash. Now I simply just glued it back together, everything was perfectly fine. But recently, the selector switch has stopped working. Now I wanna to stress to anyone who has this flash out there, this is not a mechanical defect. This is damage caused by the dog knocking my camera off the desk. However, I don't wanna buy a new one yet because I only wanna buy a new one if it completely dies. Currently, I can select between TTL and 1 16th power. Now 1 16th power is a pretty good power for focus stacking, so I'm not losing much. But unfortunately, I can't change the power using this selector here, this mode dial. So to get my exposures correct for the next couple of months until I replace this flash, I will be using the ISO setting. Now near enough, every focus stack I've done on my Olympus setup has been using ISO 200, which is the native ISO. Native ISO means that that is the ISO that the camera performs its best at when it comes to dynamic range and noise and grain. I sometimes use ISO 400 and put the power to 132 power. That way the stack gets done quicker. The recycle on the flash is quicker and I've had good results with that. Now you've heard me say this before about getting to know your camera particularly the f-stops you go through the range of f-stops and see which ones are sharp which ones create diffraction how far can you go up in the f-stop range before the diffraction starts to kick in that says noticeable things like that this time we're doing it with the iso now don't even get me started about the iso in my opinion it should be called gain all you're doing is boosting the gain on your sensor iso particularly refers to the speed of the film back in the film days whereas on digital it is just a gain so you're increasing the gain which is making the sensor more sensitive to light another aspect to consider as well is as you go up in the iso you also reduce your dynamic range on your sensor now the only reason i'm saying that is it's a technical thing i don't do technical things all i care about is getting the shot if I have to push the ISO up and lose dynamic range to get the shot, I will do so. So with my flash selector not working, I can't select the power for my flash. I'm stuck to TTL or 1 16th, which means I have to compensate using the ISO. But what ISO do I want to use? In theory, we would like to use any type of ISO. But unfortunately, particularly with this being a micro four thirds camera, they don't perform very good when it comes to high ISO and noise and grain. And me personally, I hate noise and grain in my images so what i'm going to do now i'm going to take this camera through some iso testing that are personal to me this isn't a dxo mark chart i never use dxo because that's a technical chart i am more of an artist and i want to see what my brush is capable of doing and how much paint i can put onto that brush before it falls apart another factor is as well is i want to do more natural light macro photography this year as well so early morning natural light stuff so in order to do that i need to get to know my camera so for testing i did a simple test here with a leaf and a water drop and all the image details will be on the screen as you can see here and for noise reduction i will be using topaz denoise there's a link in the description if you want to check out topaz denoise it is an affiliate link and it does give a little bit of a kickback to me if you do purchase it but it does help me to bring you this free content what we do is we set up a simple scene where none of our settings change and we start off at the lowest iso and then we increase our iso taking a picture on each iso setting and all we do is we change the shutter speed so let me come over to my notes now and i have a bunch of notes here for my em1 mark ii ISO 64, 100, 200 are very clean ISOs. We haven't got to worry at all about the noise and grain within those settings. So we have ISO 250 and ISO 320, which is I've marked up as personal choice. So when you look at these images, it's your personal choice as to whether you need to reduce the noise using noise reduction software. I chose a low light setting within Topaz Denoise to reduce that noise a little bit. So for me, those ISO settings are perfectly okay. From ISO 400 to ISO 1000, we're again using minor 
noise reduction, low light at a 25 setting within Topaz. That's perfectly okay, we can get away with that. When we hit 1250 ISO, I class that as medium noise, and again, a low light setting in Topaz at a setting of 35 cleans that up quite nicely. Then when we get to ISO 1600, all of a sudden it jumps to a high noise. So we've gone from two settings, we've gone from 1000 ISO, which is a low noise, to 1600, which is high noise. That's a massive difference right there. But again, using noise reduction software, we can clean that up. And on that particular one, I used the low light setting again, but set to 100. And I used that again for ISO 2000. When we hit ISO 2500, it's a high noise reduction that we need to do. And I use the severe noise at 100. You can get away with that. It's again, personal choice as to whether you do that. And we keep that setting up to ISO 3200. Above ISO 3200, we come into the severe noise that can be reduced, but not recommended. So that's from ISO 4000, to ISO 12,800. And above that, which is 16,000, 20,000, and 26,000, I've literally just written good luck because we're not going to be able to clean those images up. Yes, the software can reduce the noise, but you get a kind of muddy effect in your images and a weird pattern which doesn't look good. And I can guarantee you now, you will not be able to stack those images very good. But now let's get to the crucial thing. Why did we do this? Well, it's simple. When I start going outside, when it finally stops raining, I should say, when it stops raining and I can finally go outside, I am quite confident that I can take this camera now out in the field and I know exactly what settings I want to use. When it comes to ISO, if I'm doing a single shot, I can go up to 3200 ISO and still be able to clean that up using Topaz Denoise. If I'm focus stacking, I'm not going to push the camera any higher than ISO 1000 because I know at 1000 I can still clean it up and get a decent stack. Now, of course, the noise and grain will change depending on the scene that you are photographing. So these figures are just a ballpark figure, a range that I can safely stay within and clean up nicely in post-production. So I simply took an hour out of my time just to test my camera again, personal. I can't stress it enough. This isn't a DxO mark chart. This is what I like myself what's aesthetically pleasing to me and what I feel I can get away with with my editing style. So there you go. If it's raining again today, as it is with me, we have another storm coming in. Get your camera out, test your ISO ranges so that when you're out and about and you see a scene where you might potentially have only one shot at getting this image, you know exactly what ISOs you can use. I hope that was helpful. I hope you're going to give it a go. Let me know in the comments below if you are. But for now, that's where I should leave this video. My name's Stuart Wood and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please subscribe and click the like button. It really does help out the channel. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support in supporting me and this channel. If you're interested in joining Patreon, then check in the description below this video for a link to Patreon. If you want to continue watching my macro journey, then click one of the videos in front of you now.